Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer podcast. It is Sunday, October 22nd in the year 2023, and I am Deb McBride in lovely Escazú, Costa Rica. And we are in the middle of the eclipse corridor, and we have another eclipse next Saturday, the 28th. And then we're going to be finished, relatively speaking. But in the meantime, if you did not get to attend my lovely masterclass on the energetics of eclipses, I invite you to purchase the recording because it's available and it's chock full of information for you to learn more about these eclipses and the particulars of each eclipse and why you may have felt the way you did and how to manage the rest of this eclipse time and when it really finishes as opposed to just next Saturday and how to handle them for on into eternity (laughs) and how often they come and why do they come and why do we feel like this and it has been quite a feeling right (laughs) Um, And the other thing I want to mention is at that eclipse event, prior to the eclipses, I made sure of that, I announced my creation immersion, which is my latest immersion for you. If you're interested in creating content and putting it out there and taking your vision out on the road with you. So that's going to be mid-November, and I invite you to join me in that. For information, contact me. Deb at DebMcBride.com, info at TheGoldenAstrologer.com, and we uh, can converse about what that entails. You can also find it very much on my Instagram profile, The Golden Astrologer. In the meantime, we are looking at uh, yet one more week of this energy. So I have to say that whole week before the eclipse was crazy intense, as if you listened to my podcast last weekend, you heard it and everything that I was dealing with. And this week was milder, but I have to say, it was still really intense. And Friday, I had three trainings to attend, one astrology session, and and then I attended a birthday dinner. So there was just so much on Friday that was relevant and important and, and just one thing after another. And it's just been, it's been really intense. And then other days during the week involved, you know, I, I look at the calendar and the scribbles of, of what I had to attend every day. I had something at 11 a.m. Basically every day this week, I guess one day it started at noon, but from the 16th of October all the way through the 20th, or actually yesterday, the 21st, I attended something at 11 a.m. So I had something at every morning this week that I had to be in, and then other stuff going on as well. I had a packed Thursday morning. It's been crazy. It's been really wild. And I think that this is the nature of the eclipses we're in. Sometimes they come and they get a little intense and they pass and you're not, like you notice it a bit. Like the last set of eclipses, I have to say, brought me some turbulence that was back in May. And it was fine, fine, fine. And then something kind of exploded and that was problematic and I had to sort that out. But this one is just days of like nonstop activity and going and going. And so, you know, I have to really like step back, take a break, eat something warm and cozy, you know. Um, and it's it's very important to do that. So um, part of this intensity is that, you know, there's been a lot of other stuff. And, you know, we were talking about Mars at the South Node and then the, the, sun and, the Sun and Mercury were both at the South Node this week. And so we had, you know... I felt that the sun on the south node was definitely, I felt like I was getting pulled into something and we really had to, um, you know, get through that. That was a little bit of uh, uncomfortable emotions, the sun going over the south node and, you know, that was midweek and it definitely felt like something, um, is complicated emotionally, like we had to sort through things. And I have to tell you, so that was in the sky. If you are 
uh, knowing your chart, you should pay attention to when the sun goes over your personal south node because that is a time when you don't feel like yourself and you, you deal with all sorts of unsavory emotions and old habits and, and you know feeling like you're getting sucked into a vortex. Mine always occurs New Year's Day. So when like New Year's Day comes around, I have to be sure that I'm doing good things for myself and taking care of myself. And in those days that follow January 2nd and everything, I have to always make sure that something that I'm taking good care of myself. Because when the sun comes to my south node, you have your own personal, not so much an eclipse, but, but uh, some uh, highlighting of old patterns and... I've managed it extremely well. I know when it's coming, and I'm, I'm actually in much better shape than I was, say, 30 years ago. 30 years ago, I used to, you know, you'd have to go back to work after Christmas and everything, and I used to be really in a sinkhole. And it, it would just have to pass over a couple of days. And even when, well, when I was a kid, of course, because when you're a kid, you don't know anything about any of this, and you just know that what you're feeling is unsavory and uncomfortable and so that sun over the south node can be like that so we've gotten that finished for the year so we won't need to look at that again till sometime next year in libra season and pay attention to your own south node look at where that is and look at the sun when it comes over that so like mine is obviously i said january 1st we're in capricorn and so and then also pay attention to where it is with the North Node and what that feels like, because that could be really good. Um, so now we have Mercury having entered Scorpio. And Mercury entered Scorpio today, and it really is, um, you know, it's moving pretty quickly. It's going to be out of Scorpio finished and in Sagittarius by November 11th. So we're Sunday the 22nd. So really, like, not a long time, like just about three weeks we're getting Mercury and Scorpio, and then it's going to go to Sagittarius. And um, it's an interesting dynamic because once it goes into Sag, it'll spend like another three and a half weeks there, and then it's going to go into Capricorn and then go retrograde, like not long after it goes into Capricorn. So that is something that you know, we have to contend with in December, but we're not there yet. We're on October 22nd. So Mercury's in Scorpio. So that Mercury is with Mars and it's already moved quite a bit. You know, it went in early this morning, my time, and it went in and it like now I'm recording this, you know, over 12, like maybe 14, 16 hours later. And it's already at one degree. So it's moved from the the zero degrees into one degree, it's already one degree, 12 minutes. And so we're, we're moving along here with Mercury pretty quickly. It'll slow down when it gets to Sag because it's going to get ready for that Capricorn retrograde. But like I said, we're here right now. So Mercury and Mars are in Scorpio. And tomorrow the sun will enter Scorpio, 1221 p.m. Eastern time, which is going to be 1021 a.m. my time. And that'll be three planets in Scorpio. So we will officially be in Scorpio season. And it's a deep, powerful, intense... Uh, recognition of emotions, feelings, um, drives, anything that we feel like we are um, contending with on a deep, intense level. So if you start to feel the drives and the energies and everything moving in a very uh, you know, a little bit muddy, a little bit a challenging way, know that things are in Scorpio and that we are expected to sort through these things. And, you know, jealousies and control issues and, um, you know, places where we get triggered and places where we seek transformation. So Scorpio is a place where we seek transformation and it's a time when we seek transformation as is governed by what the 
you know, the picture of nature is nature is always doing something transformative around this time of year, no matter what region you live in. So it's either transforming into the summer in the southern hemisphere or it's getting ready. We're in the autumn and we're getting ready for winter in the northern hemisphere. And here I am in the rainy season in the middle. <laughs> and thankfully it is raining. Thankfully, thankfully, hopefully we won't have water rations when we come to January. Um, but Scorpio is always something intense. It's never going to be frivolous and mild and fun, <laughs> you know, unless you find, you know, transformation fun, which it can be. It's like, wow, that was powerful. It was amazing. I feel alive. Yes, but you went through a process. Scorpio is always a process. Scorpio is never just fun. <laughs> you know, that's, we, we get into Sag season later, okay? Give it a month. Then we get into Sag season. Then it's fun, okay? Then the Christmas parties start and the, the whatever parties start, okay? So, since everything's moving gently into Scorpio, they are also making a very pleasant relationship to Saturn. And that is because Saturn's in Pisces, in the early degrees of Pisces, and it's zero degrees Pisces. And as planets move into uh, Scorpio, they are making a trine, which is a lovely flowing aspect to Saturn, which gives us some structure as things step into Scorpio. So there's a reality base and a conscientiousness and, and also a consciousness because Saturn's in Pisces. So this is all water. So we may become very aware of our emotions, very aware of our feelings, very aware of like we are, we are tangibly understanding our emotions as things pass to that trine with Saturn, which is a very good thing. We like this. We want to be in that position of really becoming conscious and having awareness and uh, a concrete sense, sense of that, okay? So that is like the entry of these planets into Scorpio. And the sun will make that nice trine to Scorpio on the wee hours of Tuesday, the 24th, 3.14 a.m. Eastern Time. And it will be, um, it will be in my region of the world, 1.14 a.m. Yes. So as we move into the week, we start to look at, you know, the, the full moon that's already appearing in the sky, like half a moon. And we're starting to look at that and say the full moon is coming and the full moon is the lunar eclipse so this week it's not just any old full moon on saturday the 28th like i mentioned we are having another eclipse and this will be the last eclipse and it is at five degrees taurus and it will occur at 4 24 p.m eastern time on saturday the 28th which is 2 24 my time and that eclipse is in Taurus. So remember that when we have a full moon, wherever the sun is, which will be Scorpio by then, is then opposite where the moon will be. Okay, so the moon's going to come in and oppose the sun, and that's our full moon. But this is an eclipse, so this eclipse is going to be in Taurus, which is the opposite sign from Scorpio. Now, the moon likes to be in Taurus, but this is a particularly interesting eclipse because it will be a moon close to Jupiter. So that is something that we can sort of look forward to. And it could be intense again because, you know, Jupiter's big. So as we move in through this week, I don't expect things to quiet down. I expect things to be more of the same, although I really hope that it's not as it was two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> because that is something I don't want to, I don't want to have to like sort through again. So, um, this is it. The lunar eclipse is in Taurus with close to Jupiter. And then that moon will make a conjunction to Jupiter much later in the evening. So since that's going to be 424 PM, um, it's going to be 2.37 a.m. Eastern Time. So that's many hours later, you know, 10 hours later or so, uh, that it makes that conjunction to Jupiter. 
Okay, so it's not that close. It's not like within minutes, but it's also, it's moving towards Jupiter. So that's about abundance and, you know, expansion and all the good things we love in life. Now, um, Taurus is an interesting experience because Taurus is a sign that loves comfort and this may not be comfortable. So seek comfort how you can. All those tips I gave and again, my Eclipse Masterclass talks about a lot of that more deeply. And there are other things going on that day. So Mars which is in Scorpio, is going to oppose Jupiter about noonish. The experience of Mercury in Scorpio, that's going to oppose Jupiter also at 11.44 p.m. And the moon is in Taurus, so it's going to conjunct Jupiter. So Jupiter is heavily involved in the energies of Saturday the 28th. And we want to be aware of that because, again, it's big energy. Now, Mars and Jupiter, wow, that's fun. That's that comes with all sorts of interesting details. Mars is the planet of energy and action and confidence and warrior planet and standing up for things and walking in with your sword in the air and I'm going to fight. And so opposite Jupiter, what does that feel like? It can feel big. <laughs> it can feel like you get feisty. You know, Mars is in its home place of Scorpio and it's like, yeah, I'm going to assert myself in the way I know how because this is the right thing and etc, etc. Mars. It's Mars, right? But it's going to oppose Jupiter, which is, you know, expansion and bigness and super confidence. And there may be things where we get a little ahead of ourselves and we don't necessarily want to do that. We, we want to maintain some sort of uh, calmness and focus and a sense of being grounded because Jupiter's in Taurus and Jupiter. So Jupiter's pretty involved here. Okay. That day it's, it's very involved and it's a big energy. So, you know, the thing you don't want to do is overindulge on anything. You know, Jupiter's in Taurus. It's about comfort. It's about comfort food. It's anything, you know, so don't go get that spaghetti buffet happening. <laughs> okay. We're looking for a certain amount of comfort because Jupiter is getting triggered in Taurus. We are looking towards those things, but there's oppositions. So Mars may be, well, like if I can't go like fight my good fight, I'm going to eat my way through this day, <laughs> you know, or something. So pay attention. I'm always telling you to pay attention, right? Pay attention to the energies of this time. Mars is forceful and energetic and don't do more than you think you can do because a Mars opposite Jupiter is like, is an overconfidence. I can push that. I could push my car up the hill. <laughs> no, go get help. Call, you know, AAA or whatever you have. Um, you know, get help for your car before you push it up the hill. Don't do dumb, overconfident things. And in the moment, it's impulsive. You know, Mars and Jupiter, it's impulsive. It's an eclipse day. You may overextend yourself in a way that you're going to regret later when you wake up the next morning with a backache. So don't do these things. Be very careful. Don't be overconfident. Watch fire. Watch anything you're going to, you know, we're going to make a barbecue. Oh, my God. <laughs> be very careful. Be very careful you know, be reasonable within your confidence. Stretch yourself. Yes. If you feel, you know, maybe not so confident, maybe a little bit wary, then you can step outside your comfort zone with Jupiter. And it depends on the kind of person you are and your aspects in your astrological chart. You know, it's, if you are someone who is a little shy and doesn't necessarily extend themselves, this is a good time to step out of your comfort zone and stretch a little bit. It's an excellent time for that. And, you know, going forward with the project, um, because then the eclipses will be over, <laughs> you know, um, asking for something that requires a little more stretching of the confidence. Okay. So that's good. Then there's, you know, Mercury opposite Jupiter. So, you know, it's later that night, but depends on where you are in the world. Again, it's stretching your thoughts, stretching 
your ideas, getting connected to um, something bigger and greater in your world. So it's really actually a very good promise that you can get something new accomplished um, through this Jupiterian energy. You know, you maybe you want to expand your life in a new way and you're thinking it like things occur on eclipses like maybe you'll get an opportunity maybe your mind will open up okay to something new maybe you get new ideas right this is all positive now if mars is opposing jupiter and mercury is then opposing jupiter what do we know about mercury and mars they're conjunct they're in the same place at the same time. And that is going to happen Sunday the 29th at 10.22 a.m. Eastern Time. So if it's like geometry. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So if Mars is opposite Jupiter and Mercury is opposite Jupiter, Mars and Mercury are conjunct. And that means between, you know, probably starting energetically on Friday and then Saturday and then Sunday, we've got a whole lot of Mars and Mercury together in Scorpio. This is amazing energy for penetrative thinking, for strategies, for big penetrative thinking, like deep, profound, transformational thinking. Okay, the sun won't join them. The sun isn't going to be there. You know, they've, they'll have moved quite a bit. The Mercury's faster, and the sun won't really get there for a little while yet till the following week when we get into November. But in this experience, I think this is highly profound. When we get all that juicy Scorpio stuff that unearths ideas and creatures, deep creativity you know Scorpio's water it's fertile right so we're going into that watery realm of intensity and passions and ideas and deep creativity yeah you can come up with something that is like really maybe life-changing for your work and you know it's since it's all happening on the eclipse things are going to get a little more intense a little more powerful, a little more punchy. So I, I think that this eclipse is going to be pretty good. I don't, and by that, I don't mean nothing is going to happen. And then you're going to get magically get millions of dollars. I don't, I don't mean that because it's Jupiter. Um, I mean that it'll probably in, be inspirational. It'll probably be pushing you along a little bit to like stretch yourself. It it, and it also depends. Remember what I always say. It's about your astrological chart, too. So where is this happening in your astrological chart? And I ask that, and I talk about that in my, my master classes always. You know, where do we get this in our charts? How do we process this? What house is it in? If it's in the 12th house, you might not sleep very well. You know? Where are you getting these things? And... Otherwise, it's exciting energy. And so don't get so excited that you like overextend yourself, like I said. So you have to be aware, and awareness is always key, and you have to be calm because Taurus is a calm sign, remember. Taurus doesn't like conflict. Taurus wants, you know, nice, calm energy. You know, it's ruled by Venus. And we're asking ourselves where we want to go with this. Where, where is the next level of our transformation and evolution, okay? What information does this eclipse bring you? Remember, Mercury's sort of here too. It's not really close to the eclipse. It's past where the sun will be, but it's an information planet, Okay, so there's going to be some information, there's going to be inspiration, there's going to be, um, you know, uh, confidence and next level thinking. Forget the eclipse. It's Mercury opposite Jupiter and Mars opposite Jupiter and Mercury and Mars together. And this in and of itself, w without the eclipse, is going to bring us some really juicy stuff. So it's that Mercury, Mars, Jupiter thing that's going on next weekend that I think is going to highlight stuff and bring some positive energy. And then there is the eclipse. So this is something where we need to be aware. 
and where we need to stay kind of focused. Now, the moon, as it moves through Taurus, because that's where it's going to be on Saturday, the 28th, is then going to trigger that Jupiter, trigger that Mercury, trigger that Mars. And the moon is obviously going to stir the pot on those planets. So I expect a lot of activity, a lot of activity. Keep grounded, keep focused, get clear. Clarity is going to take you very far. Clarity is the way to go. Stay grounded, stay clear, stay focused. And that's going to, you're going to gain a lot from that. So it's a good day to do the deep work, the deep thinking, the deep strategizing, the deep, um, connecting with what's next in your creativity, in your creative world. So that's, that's really, really important. So be aware of those things. Be aware of those things. In the meantime, Venus is still in Virgo, and she's made a very lovely trying to Jupiter today. So they're having a very lovely conversation. And we like it when the greater benefic, Jupiter, and the lesser benefic, Venus, is all you know, cozy together and they're, they're talking sweetly to one another, that makes a very positive experience. So I hope you had a positive experience in your weekend these last couple days. And that'll kind of flow into tomorrow. Venus is pretty solitary this week. She's not very involved with stuff. You know, she'll have the moon a little bit, but for the most part, her aspect on Thursday is that she's going to make that weird needling aspect, the inconjunct that I speak of, to Chiron. So there may be some little ouch moments on Thursday, and the moon will be in Aries that day, and it doesn't really go into Taurus until Saturday at 7.44 a.m. Eastern Time. And the moon is currently in Aquarius, so it's got that journey through the last parts of the zodiac and then in the early parts of the zodiac. And then the moon will continue its journey through Taurus for the eclipse, and then Sunday, and then Monday the 30th, it will enter Gemini. And the next big aspect Venus will make will be on Halloween when she does the trine to Uranus, so she's much later in Virgo. So, uh, this full moon is the last eclipse of the year, and we don't leave really like clear out eclipse season until the new moon on the 13th of November, and that's at 20 degrees of Scorpio. So as we're heading towards the Sagittarius season, we've just, you know, we're going to take those two weeks, and that's going to be the decompressing two weeks after eclipse season. So we decompress, we move forward, we leave the eclipses behind for another six months, another day, okay? And Scorpio season asks that we feel all the feelings, okay? And it is so important to feel things, allow them to move through us, to process them, and keep you know, releasing what we need to release and because Scorpio loves transformation, but also really create awareness about what we're releasing, feel the feelings, let them go, let them pass through you. The worst thing we can do, especially in Scorpio season, is shove the feelings aside to plow through our day and not really process things because frozen emotions create energetic blocks, okay? Frozen emotions do not allow us to move forward in our life. They create energetic blocks, and then we don't have energetic space to receive. And I know receiving is more of a, a dynamic of the feminine, and taking action is a dynamic of the masculine. But what we need to do is, is you know, Scorpio is a water sign, and and, and practice now, but it's good to do all the time, well, no matter what season it is. But it's so important to receive the emotions, let them move through us, understand them, process them, whether we need to cry, write, sit alone, walk in nature, do whatever we need to do to process the feelings and let them go and loosen up and make the space for receiving. 
This is in business. This is in love. This is in personal relationships. This is in money for sure. Okay. If you want to receive anything, especially money, <laughs> you need to loosen up those frozen emotions so that they don't stop you from receiving. So while we're in Scorpio season, that's our work. We want to feel the feelings and work with that energy and release whatever is not necessary. Scorpio is about transformation. And that's it for this week. If you would like to know more about astrology and you've enjoyed this podcast, you can have a session with me. Just book it at thegoldenastrologer.com, book online, and you have a choice of what you can have with me. You can have an astrology session, a Reiki healing, uh, you know, an emotional clearing, and also my expansion mentoring, which is, you know, a longer journey than just one session and it helps you, you know, where we do life together, where we can walk the path together. And I work with you very deeply on that. So those are starting at three months. And if you'd like more information about that, you can message me and I can explain what that process is like and certainly send me your questions about expansion mentoring. You can email me, deb at debmcbride.com or info with the golden astrologer.com and that's to work with me on expansion mentoring so i welcome one and all thank you for listening i will be here on the other side of the eclipse on sunday the 29th and for sure i'll be on instagram this week the golden astrologer so join me there and i look forward to serving you again thank you for listening much gratitude to all have a beautiful week and a beautiful eclipse.